most of you understand that making fan art and selling it is illegal. But what most of you don't understand is that making fan art and not selling it is also illegal. If you would make fan art and post it on social media and grow your audience or not grow your audience at all, it doesn't really matter, then that is still illegal. If, however, you would make fan art and give it away for free, just give it away, well then that, that would still be illegal. Here's the thing, if you're an artist, you have to understand that the reason why your fan art is getting so much attention is not because of your amazing drawing skills or the amazing colors that you used. It's because the marketing and brand efforts of big companies like Disney to make sure that people love their characters. Luckily for those who want to make fan art and sell it, there are some loopholes and some exceptions. And some of these loopholes are even very, very lucrative. I know artists who make fan art and sell it and make six figures doing so. Now we're not talking about artists who are sellouts and who are selling to children only. No, 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 we're talking about fine artists who are working with galleries and museums and have fan art elements in their practice as well. And so in this video, we will be covering everything that you need to know about fan art selling it. What are the best practices? When is it legal? When is it illegal? And how to actually make a lot of money doing so. Now, as a general disclaimer, I have to say that I'm not the personality that would sacrifice five years of his life just to memorize, to study things that I don't even like, such as rules, for example. In other words, I'm not a lawyer, and so you have to take everything that I say with a grain of salt, even though everything is completely 100% correct. Take it with a grain of salt anyway, just to make sure. Now, there's one more thing that I like even more than lawyers and rules, and that is my favorite color, which is like button blue. Yesterday I asked some lawyers and it turns out the color is part of the public domain. In other words, you can just press it legally. Liking this video is not copyright infringement, even though some other people have already done that. What it does do is help artists like me out with the algorithm. And so thank you very much. So let's dive in right away. Now, first things first, let's get some myths out of the way. Myths that are circling around the internet about copyright infringement and fan art, etc. The first myth is that if you're not selling fan art, then it is not commercial use and therefore it is legal because the copyright law states that it can only be copyright infringement if it is for commercial use. Now, that is indeed what the copyright law states, but that does not make you're not selling suddenly not commercial use. And so it's completely wrong. Let's take the following example, for example. If you would make fan art and then you would make prints of it and then you would give those prints away for, to your friends for free, not charging them anything, then that is commercial use because those prints will have an impact on the market. Your friends who are getting those prints for free will now be less likely to buy prints for $15 that are similar because they can get them free from you. And so the, the market gets partially saturated because of your prints. If 10,000 people would do that, that would have an insane impact. And so this is commercial use, even though you're not selling it. The second myth is that fan art is transformative. It changes the, the original artwork and therefore it's not copyright infringement. Now, first of all, everything that is about transformative and all of those things is very subjective and will be ruled differently depending on which judge you have in court. Second of all, fan art is not really transformative or at least most fan art is not transformative at all. In order to be transformative, you need to have a parody that completely transforms the original uh, character and storyline and everything. And so let's take the following example, for example. If you would take a painting and you would include in the painting a small Pokemon character. Let's say the Pokemon character is only 2% of the painting and surrounding it is like uh, landscape stuff, other characters that you've invented, just the whole uh, conceptual thing. It's completely your creation. Now in this scenario, it is still copyright infringement. It's still illegal. Why? Because you have created or you have used the entire character of Pokemon. 
completely as it is intended. And those things are marketed and branded by somebody else. And so this is copyright infringement. Now the third myth is wildly common among artists who are watching this channel. Many people believe that if somebody else already like this video that they cannot like it again anymore because of copyright infringement. Now, of course, this is not true. You can like my videos as much as you want over and over and over again. So let's talk about some of the ways that you can make fan art. Now, the first one is, of course, by getting permission. Let's give you an example of one of my favorite fan art oriented artists out there. Pez, P-E-Z. Now, if you look at his art, you will see a lot of Banksy vibes. You will see very original stuff. You will see a lot of famous characters as well. But most people who look at his art, they would not consider this fan art because it is so original. It's so unique. It's so different, etc., etc., etc. But if we look at this image, for example, this is clearly Tweedy Sylvester from Bugs Bunny. And so this fact, the fact that it is a famous character is also part of why this image is so powerful. If Bess would have used a different bird that was not famous, then this image would just be less powerful. It would have less impact. And so the reason why people would want to buy this is partially because of the marketing and branding efforts the companies have used or put in to make Bugs Bunny Bugs Bunny. And so if this would go to court, then this could be ruled copyright infringement and illegal, even though it has a lot of transformative elements in it. I mean, this is this is a very original piece of art, you know? Now, I don't know Bass personally, so I, I, I don't really know if he has permission, but I think he has permission, otherwise he risks his entire business. He risks just his entire business being taken away from him. Now, I know what you're thinking. In the case of Bass, there is actually some discussion that is possible. I mean, a lot of his work could be considered fair use because there's a lot of parody going on, a lot of transformation and, 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 and critique towards the original piece. But, but that's always subjective. And so you should get permission, especially when you want to work with galleries or museums or stuff like that, because those institutions will never take the risk and, and go and see with you. And especially because it's, it's also fairly easy to get permission in the first place. A lot of these companies are making an insane amount of money on licensing the, the characters that they own. The Walt Disney Corporation, for example, makes $56 billion a year on li licensed merchandise. And so this is not only good for those companies because they get money coming in, but also because they get free advertisement and marketing and brand awareness and all of that stuff through licensing their characters. The second way to use fan art in a legal way is to use art that belongs to the public domain. In other words, art that has been created a very long time ago. For most Western countries, it needs to be created 50 years ago or longer. Western countries like Europe or America, stuff like that. Now, this is the rule at this moment, but this might change because if you have a lot of money, if you are making $56 billion on licensed art every single year like Disney, you kind of want to change those rules. And Disney is trying to do that heavily through lobbying as we speak. And so this might change if they succeed in that. Now, of course, these things, these rules differ from country to country. In other countries, it's, it's more or less than 50 years. And so you have to search that up for yourself, for your country, what it is. But here you have a list already of most countries, most times and stuff like that. To give you an example of what belongs to the public domain, a good example is classic monsters. Monsters that have been created in books a very long time ago, like Frankenstein, Dracula, werewolf, monsters like that. And so if you want to draw that, that's completely possible. But you have to make sure that the drawing is not too close to the way it was drawn or pictured in movies like movies made by Universal Pictures, for example. Because, of course, they have put a lot of money in those movies. And so that type of Frankenstein monster belongs to them. So you can draw it, but not the same way it has been drawn by other creators that have created that less than 50 years ago. Here's something that you have to understand. 
for art that you make yourself, character that you make yourself, you cannot use SEO strategies to sell it. Why? Because nobody is searching for those characters. Nobody is searching for your art. And so you can do that when it comes to fan art. Why? Because those companies, as already said, have put the marketing dollars in. And so if you would do that, you are piggyback riding their success. That's why this, this whole thing is legal. As you probably sense from the first part of this video, this whole copyright thing is very complex. It's so complex that big companies like Disney themselves make mistakes against it. Let me give you an example. At some point they made a theme park attraction about the Indiana Jones movie. But they couldn't make the character look like Harrison Ford who played Indiana Jones in that movie. Why? Because they didn't have the rights to the likeness of Harrison Ford. And so this is how far these things go. If you have a movie and you market the movie, you have the rights to the likeness of your main characters. And so in other words, if you are an artist and you are drawing portraits of famous movie stars, then that is also illegal. I know these, these Instagram pages with drawings of famous movie stars, they, they can grow very quickly, but that is also illegal. The reason why it is growing is not because these people are so good at making art. It's because, because of the marketing dollars of those big movie companies like Hollywood, whatever shills. If after hearing all of this, all of this complex copyright law type of stuff, you want to play it really safe so you can get away from all of that, uh, then I would recommend using print-on-demand stores. Like for example, Redbubble or Public, which is by the way owned by Redbubble or designed by humans or any of those print-on-demand services. Why? Because those websites sell a lot of fan art and so they have collaborations with those big companies creating that, fan, the, creating that art in the first place. Like Disney and stuff like that. And so what you're then basically doing is outsourcing the legal aspects to those print-on-demand companies. So the way to do that is very easy. Let's take Redbubble for example, because I have a lot of experience with that one. You go to the website and you go to current brand partnership section where you will find all the TV programs and movies that you can use to make fan art of. Now for all other websites, the process is probably gonna be the same or something similar. Or something similar, yeah. Now before you start getting afraid because of all the things that you hear about the copyright things, that people might sue you and all of that stuff, here's the thing, big companies, they will not really care about small people like us making a couple of bucks here and there from those things. You know, if you are posting videos about you making fan art or you're posting fan art on Instagram, even though those things could make you money and are definitely commercial, they will probably not do anything. And the main reason for that is because they cannot, they cannot sue small people like us because then they would look really bad. It wouldn't take too long before those things would backfire on them heavily. And so for marketing reasons, they cannot sue small creators. I mean, Disney, for example, is making $56 billion licensed merchandise a year. How would it look that they would then start suing people like us, even though they're making all of that money anyway? I mean, that, that would just be bad publicity. And so that's not going to happen. Now, does this mean that I'm telling you that you should be making fan art and posting it everywhere? No. That would not be valid legal advice, but you should because really nobody cares. No, let's be serious. Would I recommend you building a YouTube channel around fan art? No, not because you would get sued because that's probably not going to happen, but because of a different reason. Here's the thing. If you, let's say in the best case scenario, you make a, a YouTube channel and you reach millions of subscribers. You're like a famous fan art, whatever guy or girl. Here's the thing. While Disney or a Disney corporation might not sue you, although you, you increase the risk of that happening and it definitely happened in the past with different companies, and different things. But here's the thing. They might not sue you, but they will call you and they will say the following thing. Hey, John. Everything all right? We saw your channel and we think, we think it's amazing. I mean, your art is, is just perfect, but it's also illegal. And so here's the thing. Here's what we're going to do. If you don't want to get your channel being taken away and your years of hard work just overnight, bam, gone, you 
can start marketing the new coming movie, Disney movie that we will bring out. And so uh, if you can do that, then everything's fine, you know? And so, so that, that's what will happen. You will start to make compromises. You will have to make compromises. Of course, John doesn't want his channel to go away in, in an instant. And so he's just gonna dance to their pipes, to their shoes. And that's, that's kind of going against the purpose of making a YouTube channel in the first place. You wanted to make a YouTube channel so you didn't have to work for those companies, but now you're working for those companies out of pressure, you know, out of, out of, out of uh, power plays. You don't want to do that. That's not fun. That's not a, that's not a nice life. And so that's why I wouldn't recommend it. Now, the thing that I just explained is not science fiction. This happened many times in, in many ways, crossing various platforms. This is real stuff. But before you get afraid again, we don't know how things will play out in the future. We don't know how things will change. Here's the thing. Burning a CD of your favorite band was considered illegal at some point. And then everybody started doing that. And then a couple of years later, the internet, came, uh, the internet made paying for music entirely obsolete and nobody paid for music anymore, even though that is all illegal. And so what happened is that the world went from... Dude, don't just copy a CD. That's like stealing a CD from a shop. All the way to never paying for music ever again in less than 10 years. In less than 10 years. That's how life plays out. We don't know how the future will be. What I'm saying is that things might be a particular way in theory, but in practicality, it always plays out differently. It always plays out differently. And that's how it should be. I mean, I think fan art is great and drawing fan art is great. When I was 10, I was drawing a lot of Pokemons myself. That's how I started drawing really. And, and that should be okay. And if there would have been social media at the time, I would have posted it on social media. And if somebody would have said to me or, or asked me if, I, if he could buy that drawing, that Pokemon drawing for 10 euro, then I would have said, no, what the hell? Get some manners, give me some real cash. And then if they would have given me some real cash, I would have probably sold it to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. That should be fine. That, that, like, that is healthy. That is just healthy. And to be honest, this whole copywriting is kind of to some extent BS. If copyright would have taken or would be taken seriously all the time, then fandoms wouldn't be able to exist. No fan art, no fan fiction, no fan parties, no videos, no nothing, no cosplay, nothing. And that would be a boring world. And so you shouldn't take it too seriously. It's, I mean, these companies are also benefiting from it, as we already explained. They, these, these practices keep their brand alive. And... And so that's a good thing. That's just a good thing. It's very similar to those gaming companies, this whole streaming industry of gamers. I mean, in theory, it's illegal to stream games, but all the gaming companies, they know that the only way their games are going to go viral is if big gamers or small gamers or any gamers are streaming their games online. And so nobody is doing anything against that. That's just how it goes at this moment. Now we could also be going way deeper in how to sell fine art. Fine art, no, fan art. <laughs> fan art, and how to sell fan art. I mean, I know a lot of people who are making 5K passively a month from selling fan art. And there are a lot of practices and principles that you could be using. One of the best ways is really going to be Redbubble. That site has a lot of demand, a lot of traffic at this moment and is still rising. And so that's a very powerful site. And we could be talking about that, but frankly, I mean, that would be another 10 to 15 minutes and a completely different video. And so I'm very sorry, but we're not gonna do that. Mainly because I already did in another video. It's called watch this before you start selling art on Redbubble or another video how to sell art on Redbubble. And so you could be watching those things. That said, my name was Dries Ketels. I mean, it still is Dries Ketels. And it was nice to meet you. And I hope to see you soon again. Ciao, ciao.